The winery started, uh, was built because there was a surplus of fruit at the time and the company that Peter worked for and that I worked for had said uh, we don't need to buy any grapes for this particular vintage. So uh, Peter said, well, I've encouraged the growers to come here for all these years. He said their only source of income is their fruit and I cannot go and face them and say I'm not going to take the fruit this year. It was a multinational based in UK and they decided that uh, they wouldn't buy the grapes from their traditional suppliers, i.e. the growers in the Barossa. I was told not to buy any fruit so I said well buggy you, I'm not doing that. So uh, cut a long story short we able to set up a rescue operation which we called Masterson and uh, took all the fruit and that was the beginning of uh, what's now Peter Lehman Wines. Yeah, that's um, in a nutshell, isn't it, darling? That's, <laughs> yeah, that's when, when we first formed the company in 1980, uh, we really didn't plan to go into, into glass. We, our plan was to make bulk wine, sell it to the rest of the industry, do that within six months and play golf for the other six months. That was the idyllic dream. But of course that didn't come to fruition because there was a surplus of wine at the time and um, other, other companies had enough, so we were forced into the, uh, into, the, into the glass jungle, so to speak. Peter had the uh, uh, real skill of knowing what was going on with all the growers. He knew everyone inside and out, and uh, um, I, I think he instilled that concept into the uh, people that were working for him, his winemakers, and, uh, and everyone else, and that's continued on. Peter Lehman's relationship with the with the community and the growers in the community, you know, um, w you know, he when he started his winery, I guess the families that came and gro sold grapes to him were, you know, some of the older families and had had vineyards across the valley. So, you know, I think that diversity and and I guess that loyalty and and relationship has, you know, meant that, you know. The, the vineyards that we take fruit from are, are some of the older ones and better ones and you know very progressive grape growers so I think that's helped a lot, a lot in being able to make some great wines. Most of the growers are, um, are small you know some, somewhere between 20 and 70 acres probably most of them and, uh, and so uh, you know um, <coughs> we rely on them and they rely on us and that's uh, so, so you've got a, a good uh, relationship there and uh, um, better than a, some of the big corporates. People tend to think with the Barossa it's, a, um, it's one sort of mass and it's homogenous and it's actually anything but, you know, from one end of the valley to the other or from the valley floor to Eden Valley, um, you know, the, the microclimates and the sub-regions uh, are enormous. So uh, while we're probably best known for you know, the, the, the bigger reds, the, the Shiraz and, and to a lesser extent Cabernet, um, you know, you get some very, very fine whites, uh, the Rieslings, the Semions, uh, as well, that are coming out of the region. So, um, you know, and I guess that's what this winery has really been built on. I guess initially, initially, being part of the, the Barossa, it was the focus on Shiraz, and, and particularly when Shiraz took off worldwide and uh, coincided at the same time as us, uh, Peter Lemon Wines winning the Jimmy Watson Trophy in the early 90s, and Shiraz was a focus, um, as it is across the Barossa. But I guess in recent years, our, um, our white wines, uh, and particularly the trophy winning uh, aged whites, have really been uh, uh, well, putting us on the map in that sense. You know, our winemakers are, are ab absolutely passionate about producing something that is really, really good. Because at the end of the day, we have to drink our own wines too. So uh, the better we make them, the more fun we have after ours. We're just at that nice size where we're big enough to have some scale about us, but still small enough that um, you know, everyone feels part of it and, and you know, enjoys drinking, uh, drinking the wines that we make, enjoying the wines that we make. Could be worse, could work for baked beans or toilet paper or something or other, I don't reckon that'd be near as much fun. Coming from good Lutheran stock, one thing Martin Luther said, he loves wine, women and song, remains a fool his whole life long. Well, I don't consider myself a fool because I loved them all. <laughs> and just imagine if the Barossa had been settled by Methodists. That would have been quite a different story, wouldn't it? 
<laughs> we all pitch in, I think. And I mean, I've known Margaret and Peter for a long time, and so I know that, know their philosophy and how they like to do things. And when I was asked to come and work here, it was like a combination of um, lots of things that I've done in my life, found a home where I could actually use it and work it and live it. It's, um, I'm in heaven. <laughs> I mean, we always say you work with somebody, you never work for anybody. Mm -hmm. And so if you, if you are in this, it's a, um, an enterprise together. And so, and everybody who works here is needed. So you work with, with everybody. That's um, very much your philosophy, isn't it, darling? Very much so. When um, I started the business, and, and because it was a tough time for that to the case, that everyone really worked gelled together to get through those days, from what I can understand, and, um, and including you know the growers and, and that type of thing too. So, um, and you get a sense of uh, when things are tough that that, that still happens and uh, we all work together and to get through those times. It is an interesting place as far as when you actually look at I mean, and you look at the longevity of of employees you know from all across all aspects of the business you know you've got you've got people that have been here for you know 30 years um, now I think that that actually tells a story that you know if people are prepared to stay and be you know committed to that Go away. Are you telling the truth? <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it's almost over, Ailes. Oh, <laughs> 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 see? Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. So the people, and so you know, well, I've been, I've only been here nine years. Yeah, what we like about them is that they they pay according to the letter of the law with the three instalments, you know. Whereas some of them, we've got a son-in-law, he hasn't been paid for a couple of years for some of his grapes. And quite a few of the wineries have been reneging, but Peter Lehman so far have always paid up when it was due. And they're a good company to deal with too. It's, it's been a thrilling ride to come from sort of square one where we actually had a, had a virgin hillside and had to build the winery. Everything we've achieved has been achieved from that um, one virgin vineyard site in 1979. So uh, it must be an enormous um, source of pride to, to Peter and uh, it's certainly a great source of pride to myself and to many other people who work in the company and have seen it develop from the early days. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a terrific achievement, but it's, and again, it's been a whole team effort. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm actually fifth generation Barossan, fourth born, and uh, when I was a kid, little did I ever think that I'd finish up in the wine industry, little and being associated with a company that's grown to the size of this one, much bigger than we ever, ever dreamt it would be, and it's, you know, quite remarkable.